So far, we've been studying the behavior of a single queue and a single server. But of course, in real life, things can be a bit more complicated than that. Imagine that we have a computer network where we have some kind of a client and it's communicating to a local switch. And then that switch communicates with some other switch down the line. And then that talks to another switch at the and so on until it gets to the server, perhaps in the cloud. and uh, in the rack of servers. And so what we have is the possibility of queues building up at every stage in this network. And so we have these input queues all over the place. And so if you were to represent this, you would have essentially not just a single queue with a bunch of server, with a server, but in fact a sequence of queues all over the place where, your uh, where the jobs that are being served enter a different queue and so on, and you have m queues merging and forming these other queues, uh, other systems over here. And in fact, it's even possible that the output of one would be the input of another queue, like so, forming a cycle, and uh, which makes it uh, somewhat challenging in order to uh, to model, because with these cycles, you have the output and the input coupled together. So. Uh, the general case of solving such a network of queues or a tandem of queues is actually tandem or network is actually very complicated, but we can make a little bit of progress by making some strict assumptions on the kinds of uh, uh, arrivals. So if we look at the following system, imagine that we have a set of queues that looks like this. So here is a, a set of inputs. Uh, and maybe there's several of them, all, uh, all like so, and they all are going to be input into uh, another queue like this. And just look at this system over here. We can, see, we can see that if the input to these queues are Markov, they're all Poisson processes, then it can be shown that the output of these are also, uh, and the outputs are also are Markov, so these are MM1 queues, then the sum of these uh, outputs uh, constitutes also a Markov process. And therefore, this internal queue, which is not visible from the outside, can also be modeled in terms of an MM1 queue. Right? And so the, the fact that the mixture of Poisson processes is also Poisson allows us to analyze this. And then if this and some other queues over here join and go to set yet another queue inside, and another queue over here, then that can also be analyzed using an MM1. And this is a very nice uh, uh, way of dealing with things. It makes things a little bit less complicated. But what about cycles? And what about uh, routing where some packets go here and some packets go there? So we have the choice of which, ways, uh, which way the packets flow. Uh, in this kind of situation, it's not obvious that we can make progress. However, um, uh, uh, a mathematician uh, called J.R. Jackson was able to show that under some conditions, we can take uh, these fairly complicated systems, including rings and, uh, and, and cycles, and analyze them. And in specifically what he said was that if customers can uh, allow any queue, not just the ones at the end, but also intermediate queues like this, uh, they must come in as Poisson processes and they're also allowed to uh, join from here to another, from one queue to another using some probability uh, like this, or actually exit the system. This is an exit with some probability or join another system like this in some probability, and we know all these probabilities. Then these behave as if they are a MMM queue, a Markov Markov M queue, which means they are M servers, not just one server, and uh, because of this, these are what are called Jacksonian networks. And so that's one reason why we're really quite keen to model all the inputs as Poisson processes. For a Jacksonian network, we have a pretty strong result. Uh, let denote this probability pi star k1, k2, etc., kn as the long-term probability that there are k customers in the first node, k2 customers in the second node, et cetera. So you have n nodes, 
and we want to know what is the probability that there are K1 customers in the first node, K2 in the second, all the way over here. And what he showed was that this is exactly the probability of the K1 in the first multiplied by K2 in the second multiplied by all the way to Kn at the end, which in other words, what we're saying is that this joint probability is the product of the individual probabilities, and so these act as if they're independent of each other. So in other words, this Poisson uh, arrival processes allows these views to be decoupled, and this is what's called a product form. Uh, this is a great result, and on a one would wish we could use it, but in practice, actually, we find that the arrivals are not Poisson, and so and services are not uh, uh, exponentially distributed either. And for these reasons, we actually uh, cannot use Jacksonian networks in our analysis. Uh, instead, what we end up having to do is to use uh, simulations, and we will therefore start discussing simulations or stochastic processes. Uh, next in this course.